Hello everyone, so my name is Jamara Winchester and today I'm going to be talking to you all about my literature review topic. Um, so within this discussion video, I'll actually be touching base on my research question for my literature review. And so just to provide you with some background, my research question is, uh, what are the effects of working in housing on a college campus? And so, you know, my interest came about from when I was an undergraduate um, when I was undergrad and I was a resident assistant also known as an RA for about two years on campus and so I'll get into a little bit more detail later on like within this video as to what is an RA exactly and what the you know what the job entails and stuff like that and so that's my research question and the two topics that I'm going to be focusing on within this video um, the first one being, you know, why was the resident assistant position created? Um, why was the paraprofessional position created within housing and residence life? Like, you know, like what was the need for it? And so secondly, I'll be focusing on, you know, work-life balance and burnout as well as staff motivation. I'm just going to connect those and tie that all into one. So those are the two topics I'll be focusing on. And then at, towards the end, like, I'll give you my thoughts and stuff. So I hope you enjoy. Let me know. So first and foremost, as I mentioned previously, um, the RA position and paraprofessional position within housing and residence life. So it began back in, like, um, like colonial times when there was colonial colleges back in the day. Um there were faculty members that worked at these colonial colleges and they saw a need for a faculty member to be in charge of students or oversee students and be a resource to them because they found that, you know, at these colonial colleges, you know, students' behavior became an issue. So students were acting out negatively because they were living in, you know, close proximity to each other. And so if you don't know what a residence hall looks like. You know, they're all different. They vary at different institutionals and so forth, you know, as far as, like, architecture and stuff like that. But in a typical residence hall, there's a narrow hallway, and, you know, you'll be in a residence hall room. You'll either be in, like, a traditional double room with two beds, two of everything, um, no kitchen, or you could possibly live in an apartment style. It just, it all depends. And so within a residence hall, you know, you're in your room, you have like a person living on the left side of you, a person living on the right side of you. So you have neighbors and then you have somebody across the hall from you as well. And so this is kind of like what it looks like. Try to like envision in your head, like this is what it looks like throughout each residence hall, throughout um, long corridors in the hallway, right? So you're going to have students that are going to act out. Like you're around the students the other people in your hallway 24 7 every day like so something like that is naturally bound to happen and so when this begins to happen the faculty members that worked at the colonial colleges they like we got to do something about this what are we going to do and so they stepped in as um they stepped in into like that parent role and so they were the authoritative figure for the students at the time and because you know they couldn't do everything at one time. So they're like, we need to create some sort of position for this because, you know, it's a need. And so, boom, there you have it. Paraprofessional staff members in housing and residence life. And so that kind of like moves into my next point. And so paraprofessional staff members in residence life, they're actually um, faculty and staff members that live on campus with the students within the residence halls and they're there, you know, for the students to, to be um, a resource, provide them with daily activities to do outside of the academic realm, um, and also like help them formulate community with the people that are around them. And so some, para some paraprofessional staff members consist of an area coordinator, which is somebody that oversees the daily function operations of the building and may oversee a graduate hall director on campus and so a graduate hall director on campus is someone that oversees the resident assistants on campus so they supervise them they have one-on-ones with them weekly um, they help them with planning certain things for their residents and things 
you know, as such. So just to listen a few, just to listen a few things. And so the resident assistants, which is like the core to it all, um, residence life is a core, but the resident assistants, I believe, believe are like the main focus because they're really, they're living amongst students and they're also students themselves, you know. So, um, that's my thought, I'm sorry. So the resident assistants, um, hmm. so yeah, anyway, the resident assistants <laughs> oversee the students on their floor. And so the resident assistants are a resource to the students. You know, they make them feel at home, like this is their home away from home. They provide educational programs for them, as I previously mentioned, and they're there 24 seven for the students, right? So students are able to go and knock on a resident assistant's door at any time of the night, whether it's a lockout, whether they got something going on in their family, whether they just need to talk, honestly. So, like, they always have to be available for the students because the students come first. And then so, as I mentioned, the resident assistants, they are also full-time students themselves. So they got to figure out how to juggle all this and being in a real-life position, getting real-life hands-on experience in the field, you know? So, what I think about that is, you know, and based on my experience, when I was an undergrad, I did not know what a resident assistant was until I was a freshman um, or a first-year student. Um, so, just to, like, find out about it and experience it, I understand the importance of it, and I do agree that it is definitely a need because students need somebody to come to. You know, sometimes they don't have that support system at home, so it's definitely important to have somebody at the institution they go to where they feel like they can go to and, um, you know, talk about those things that they need to talk about and have somebody that's going to advocate for them. So I feel like that's extremely important, and I'm glad it's in place. Um, so next, moving on to my next point. Um... I'm just going to be touching on staff motivation, work-life balance, and burnout. And so within the within the housing and residence life position, sometimes one may experience um, burnout because sometimes they just they're unable to balance that work-life balance because you live where you you live where you work. So like they say, you live in your workplace, right? So the position can be challenging because it's a position where um, it's full of service and full of dedication. You're working with people 24-7. So whether you're introverted or extroverted, it's definitely going to take some type of effort. Like, you're going to have to put some type of effort into it um, to be there for your students and be there for the individuals that you supervise and oversee. And so with the position, um, the research had mentioned, well, one of the researchers had mentioned that managing boundaries can be problematic for people that work from home and so because they talk about you know the work-life balance so as I mentioned RAs are full-time students they're balancing their um, work life within the RA position they're balancing their books um, like their studies they're also balancing trying to build um, a connection with their residents and having programs for them sometimes they gotta have nine programs a semester like that can be a lot on top of creating door decks creating bulletin boards uh, once a month for their residents. Um, so with that work-life balance, you know, as I mentioned, like students can just come and knock on their door at any time of the night, and they might have a big test in the morning, but they have to be there. And so when incidents arise, they have to be present. So it's just certain things that the job entails that uh, resident assistants and other paraprofessional staff members have to do and it's also what they signed up for. So it's a very rewarding um, career. Although, like I mentioned, some of, like, kind of like some of the cons to it, in a sense, as far as, like, managing your work-life balance. But on the other hand, there are many pros. So the pros are being able to actually connect with other individuals and, you know, working in housing, you actually get to become a well-rounded person because you're, you know, you're connecting with different people of different cultures on a daily basis. And, you know, you're helping individuals figure out their challenges and their struggles and you're helping them work through certain things. Whereas, you know, you might be the only person they have to lean on. And so 
again, as I mentioned, why the position was created is because you're stepping in that role of a parent or a supporter. Um, you know, you're being present for that student. So that's very important. Um, as far as the benefits go, that will kind of go into staff motivation. So some staff members are motivated for positions as such because, you know, sometimes you get a stipend depending on what type of institution you're at. And the stipend can consist of, you know, room and board, a meal plan, um, and like just outside of the monetary things, you have, um, it's like a great opportunity to actually connect, but not just connect with people, but it's also opportunity to go grow professionally and personally. So, you know, you're getting all those leadership skills, you're able to go to different conferences to enhance that development, whether you're on the professional level as an area coordinator um, or a graduate hall director or an RA. You know, there's conferences at all levels so you can actually enhance your personal and um, your personal and your educational leadership skills. And so there's so many ways to grow, so many ways to stay connected. And, you know, so many ways to just stay motivated within the position and keep the staff morale up, such as, like, staff socials. Um, you know, the paraprofessional staff members have one-on-one sometimes with students, and they also have them, like, the uh, graduate hall directors have them with the resident assistants as well. So the position is awesome to be a part of, and that's why people be a part of it. Um, so those are just a few of the things that I found interesting as far as the effects of working in housing on a college campus. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts.